Hey, I'm Brad. I'm Cindy. We're the T and Gardner. Oh, the duo, T and Gardner. Now what are we going to talk about tonight? Well, we usually do a front porch sitting, but it's too hot on the front porch right now. You vetoed that one. Yeah. I ain't sitting out there. The hay, it was like, what, 88 degrees at 8 o'clock at night? The heat index at 8.30 was 88 degrees. And here recently, the skaters, they hollered, buffet served, <laughs> every time we walk outside. I mean, I look like I had the chicken box the other day after being out there five minutes. You definitely got to put something on before you go out. My olfay ain't working strong enough. Your olfay cologne or perfume is not, not hardly good enough at times. <laughs> Ofay isn't strong enough. When Ofay isn't strong enough, you need to stay in the house. I think they hope to know about you anyway. Yeah. They found that one spot that you didn't hit. They found it. Whew. The bugs have gotten really rough lately. I don't know if the heat's bringing it out, the dry's bringing them out, but I guess they're all looking for water too, because it's ain't been a lot of them. We haven't made any garden videos in a few days. It's just really been too hot and too dry. You can't dig out there. It's just nothing but dust if you do dig. The tiller won't dig it. I have to dig it by hand with a, with a pig. So we're trying to wait till the weather changes. Wait till the heat breaks, I hope. The weather Channel keeps telling us, you know, in another week it's going to break. But you give it a day or two, it's still another week before it breaks. They've moved it a full week now. Every time I've looked at it, it's moved a few days. Bless it. Maybe by the end of uh, September we'll cook up some good weather. Well, we've been praying for rain and those poor people in the hurricanes praying it quit raining. Mm -hmm. Kind yeah. of the two extremes. It rains in this county today. It rained I about know. a half a mile west of us. About a half a mile east of us. We never dropped the drip here. We had the umbrella up. Apparently. It's because I left the windows down on the bus probably. Uh, I figured if you leave the windows down, it'd rain. Apparently, if I leave them down, it don't here. Oh. Okay. Don't want to get wet seats. Apparently. Yeah. Well, you know what happens if it rained anyways? Even when it did, where it did rain, it didn't take long for the ground to go go go, and it was dry again. Probably couldn't tell it by now. We did put out a few last weekend, a couple of videos. We got some gardening videos for putting under fall crops. They're not really doing. They're not really doing much right now. It's so dry. It's so hot. We got some they're in the surviving. planter. You got some in the planter ready to go in the ground, but you can't put them in the ground to the. They get a little softer. Yeah, it's going to rain on when you it. <laughs> have to wet it down. Sure. And the well's going dry because there's not been enough, enough rain to fill it back up. You ever had new city water? I'm having to pay for that watering. Sparingly. Mm. Yeah, don't you know when you turn that hose on, it goes cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Yeah, it really don't let them grow either. It just keeps them alive. Yeah. It's not as good as the good old rainwater is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they... I don't know. I wonder what the Farmer's Almanac says about this time. Farmer's Almanac says we're going to have a warm, wet winter. A warm, wet winter. Warmer, wet winter. It's not going to be ice cold. Cold and it's not going to get the snow and everything according to the almanac. I uh, hope it's wrong. I done a search on uh, winter reports for Tennessee and there's more than one meteorologist said that he didn't believe the almanac was right this year. He believed we'd be in between the, the low jet stream and the high jet stream, which means our weather will change from day to day. It will go up and down. I thought he's pretty well right. That's, what, that's Tennessee weather. You don't like the weather, give it a few minutes. It'll change. Well, I'm just hoping it's cold enough to kill out some of these bugs. I think that's why we have so many of them this year, because it wasn't really a cold winter last year. Um, the last meteorologist I listened to made me think of, uh, it was Christmas two or three years ago. It was like 70 degrees the day before Christmas. Christmas Eve night it came a storm and flooded everything. The next day the floodwaters was up in the fields and it snowed on top of it. 
We had four last three seasons in two days. Now we're having tornadoes every winter, every Christmas. Last mm -hmm. last two Christmases we've had tornado warnings and tornado touchdowns in this county, which is very odd. Which leads us to another little subject. Some of the people I watch, I watch several channels, homesteaders. And some of them I guess you can call preppers. Some of them believe this is the, the sign of or the end of time as we know it. They think that the weather's changing permanently. Some of them says it's, it's a bunch of hogwash and it's just weather patterns we've had throughout history. Some of them's kind of in the middle and don't really carry the way. I don't know where I fit in. If you'd like to make a suggestion or a comment, please comment on this video. Let us know what you think about that. I'm kind of curious what other people think. I kind of stand in the middle too. I'm, I don't really know. But I haven't looked up the history of our Tennessee weather and seen how the weather patterns has changed past our life, so, lifetime. But you get seasick watching the roller coaster ride. Oh yeah. Our weather pattern goes crazy. Up, down, up, down, round, round circles. Mm -hmm. That's just the luxury of Tennessee living. You know, they talk about the, the grand solar minimum and how the power of the sun's going up and down. I don't know it's, all about all that. It's interesting. But it yeah. takes some, you better, you better look it up, you better study it before you you go with what anybody says. I trust the good book. God knows when we need rain, he'll send us some rain. He fixes the wind where we need it and the ground how we need it. I just trust him more. Well, the weather's not stopped everything. We did get musky down this week. Our musky oh, down yeah. down has changed. Finally. Those are good. They're a little dry to me. But Weather, yeah. Weather's holding off too much on it. I didn't get a whole lot of juice and I squeezed them the other day and cooked them down. But they were still good. They yeah, good flavor. We got a whole lot more picking to do. Yeah. Picked one spot and I don't even think I could tell I picked that spot. It's a good tree. Bush. Is that a bush or a tree? It's a vine. Oh, it's a vine. Well, that's not in the middle one of the two. Oh, okay. oh, speaking of bushes, we got more than just musky dimes this week. The other day he was out there in the, the nut tree. I forgot the name of it. Hazelnut. Hazelnut tree. It's our first <laughs> it's the first time it's ever produced. We've got fifteen hazelnuts, American hazelnuts off our tree. Yeah. It's not hardly six foot tall yet, so it's probably about half the high as it should be. I think they said they'd get like 12 or 15 feet tall. So we get them to be a little bit more nutty before it gets over? Yeah. Okay, good. Let's well, hope the other one joins in next year and we get a double harvest. What's that? You said that's American hazelnut. What's it's the other uh, one? It's Barcelona. Barcelona. It's a foreigner. Oh, foreigner and American. <laughs> mm, okay. we got to have different ones for pollination. Oh, okay. Across pollination of different ones different kinds of hazelnut that's supposed to make it grow better. Just when I want more of them, I'm wanting four of them out there instead of two. That's a video you ought to make. We were talking the other day about taking twig or the little cuttings off of it and try to grow another one. That'd be a good video to make. And there is some sucker plants on the That's what it's called, one. sucker plant. If I can get them to read out like I did the apple trees, I can plant another one of them. That would be a cool I'd video. I'd really like to have another cluster. Barcelona or a, a hybrid one to mix with it. I three or four different ones mix. Just as long as you don't get no more of those little sour things on the corner. Yeah, we probably won't have no more of them half bush cranberries. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. I was thinking it was nut for some reason. No, I'm not in the birds to touch them things. Yeah, that's sad when the, even the animals run from it. You need something different when the animals. Speaking of dip, they will fall off and rot, and nothing will ever eat them. Even though it's been hot and dry, 
there is one thing in the garden that has flourished in the heat. The hot peppers. I picked up a pepper the other day off the floor. Well, let me rephrase that. I wondered when he bought cherries because it looked like a little red cherry on the floor. And I bent over and picked that up and I'm like, what is this? You need to be careful with that. It's a hot pepper. And I'm like, it looks like a little cherry gumdrop. What do you mean hot pepper? It's a bodai pepper. It's a South American Brazilian pepper. And it's hot. Very hot. You need a hot pepper. For its size, it's hot. It's no bigger than my, my black pinky pepper. thing. I think it's about my black, pinky size. Black pepper is hot to use. So. Well, you had to point that out, didn't you? I know I don't like spices, but per size, you have to say that was a little poignant. It's not even the size of a penny. Maybe not even, not even dime size. You need it knowing you need anything to go with it. Don't crossbreed that with my green pep my bell peppers, please. That it would be hot. Flavor, though. It has a almost a smoky like flavor for a pepper. I wouldn't know, I won't try it. <laughs> I don't like heat. Everyone has got a different flavor and got a different heat, but that can that can comes on really quick with heat, but it's not it ain't a lasting heat. Can you can those? I'm sure you can. Oh, I knew you can the bell the other peppers. The little bush don't put out enough. Oh, okay. It's not like a jalapeno. It ain't hanging full of them. Oh, okay. I just saw a big little bowl of them. It looks like spare. It looks like a Christmas lights on a Christmas tree. Oh, that's cute. It's just a bunch of little red round bulbs on it. Or it looks like cherries if you want to tell them that. It does. It looks like a little red cherry gumdrop. I sure was glad that you said not to eat that. Yeah, it looks like wild cherries. Kind of. The stem don't, but the, the no. pepper itself looks kind of like a wild cherry. Yeah. It can well, be dangerous can taste it. for somebody that don't know the difference. And it don't like heat? It don't like heat. That would be bad. What was the peppers that you picked the five gallon bucket full? Pepperoncini. Pepperoncini. That are flourishing yeah. too. Still got lots of them. I gave them away. I've taken them to church. I canned them. I'm taking another bag tomorrow to another person. We're blessed with pepper. Pepper, pepper, peppers. Bell pepper was a major producer this year. You know, we did get the jalapenos too close to some of them, and we've got hot bell hot pepper. Hot bell pepper. And lots of it. We do have mm -hmm. three bell pepper plants that puts out mild pepper, though. I like that. We've got cayenne peppers too. We've got Anaheim pepper. Like there's another out there somewhere. Garden full of hot stuff is what I say. No wonder it's drying up. we got a little bit of everything out there. All that heat in the garden, just drying it right up. We're still getting okra and we're still getting tomatoes. And Did the okra finally come? Not look like it was kind of wilting away today. No, it looks wilted every day. So oh. hot, so dry. The leaves wilt on the okra. What was it? 113 heat index yesterday. 114 on the heat index day on our weather station. My oh, goodness. Our no weather station away. says 114 on the index. It was 101 or 103 today according to Tim. Yeah, that's why only hot peppers survived it. Only hot stuff can handle that kind of heat. But at least you guys said, hey, you got some more of them jars? A uh, lady at church brought us some jars, old we jars. Got Twelve boxes of jars. There's only one catch to it. They're still full. Gotta empty them out. But that's okay. Some of them are really neat looking. Especially those bigger ones. What, what was it, quart and a half? Yeah, that's what I was told they were called a quart and a half. They're bigger than the rest of them. There's wide mouth jars and normal mouth jars. Tall slender jars. Most of them is a quart size. There is a few mayonnaise jars, but the mayonnaise tops and it's canned. I'm, I'm really scared of that one. <laughs> I'll let you open those. The old people make stuff canned. 
I mean, it still has the original mayonnaise metal lid on top, and it's sealed. Well, my grandmother was the same way. She could do that. She used whatever she could. And we don't know how old this is. They cleaned out a place somewhere and loaded these up, and she gave us about half of what they found. I figured there's probably a hundred jars. I hadn't counted them, but I'm just guessing because there's eight to ten in every box. They have somewhere around a hundred jars, and they kept a hundred. Wow. We don't know what they thought away before they caught up with this woman. Because she's going to throw them in the dumpster. She's probably afraid to open them. What's really weird, they're still sealed. And whoever the lady was that canned all these, apparently they had a bumper crop of green beans because they're full to the top. When you take the top off the canning jar, it literally is almost touching the top. There was no air space. Of course, the liquid's gone because it's old. They've been sitting way too long. It's going to tell how many years they've been canned. But the top will screw the top off, and if you pry hard enough, you can get the seal break loose. She sealed them well, whoever it was. She knew what she was doing. You know, back in the day, everybody knew how to can. You had to practically tear the top off of them, they're sealed so good. Which I know they've been sitting so long, they're probably stuck. A little rusted on it. That'd be a good one. Cleaning old jars. Mm. <laughs> I don't think they will watch us shake that stuff out of the jars. It's probably going to be gross. The con I ain't the, con the, well, the compost will be going, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm making more. <laughs> like we said earlier, if you think of something you want to tell us, leave a comment on the video. Tell us what you think. Like, subscribe. God bless.